Greetings and welcome. <coughs> oh, there we go. Greetings and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 video. Today, I'm going over the new Eldar Codex and some of the miniatures released as well. Before we get into things, let's. Uh, I just have to say thank you to Games Workshop for providing this to review early and for free, uh, as I wouldn't be able to do so otherwise. And yeah, just as always, I'll try to be impar uh, impartial, honest, and constructively critical. But yeah, thanks to Games Workshop for sending this and some lovely miniatures out early to me. And yeah, I'll just be going over the codex and the new miniatures as I managed to paint some up. But yeah, before we get into things, please remember to like and subscribe as well as comment what you thought of the video and what you think of the new Elder Codex. And well, will it get you to play the army for Warhammer 40,000? But yeah, I'll briefly go over the narrative if you weren't aware, because, you know, uh, I've been playing Eldar since I got into the hobby, so about 18 years now, something like that. Um, but yeah, the, the Eldar are effectively a dying race. They used to control the galaxy and then through their avarice, vanity and boredom, they inadvertently destroyed their own uh, basically race and summoned in Sinesh. So the craft world Eldar or Eldari uh, are the main remnants of this race and were considered effectively extremists for their puritanical views because the Eldar as a race are very psychically powerful so to keep themselves in check and stop them falling into debauchery like they did with Slanesh and the Drukhari they have to live very strict lifestyles with effectively wearing masks in like psychic masks to keep them in check and yeah this is the craft world Eldari so you know you've got aspect wires and all of that so this also combines the Harlequins, which are kind of like, well, the Crawford or Dari were kind of saved unintentionally by Cain, whereas the Harlequins are saved by Segarach, which is effectively their laughing god. So you've got their god of war and then the laughing god. But you've got these two races in the book as well as Yanari, which are a newer faction uh, who believe death will lead into rebirth. So they have their god of the dead, Yaned. Uh, or Yinyad, one of those two phrases. But that's pretty much it for the narrative. Uh, and then, yeah, let me just go into the codex quickly. Actually, I'll do the models first, and then I'll go into the codex. So I actually got sent uh, all the new models out for pre-order today. So I got sent the Guardian Kit, uh, what's it, Morgan Ra, Dark Reapers, and the Warlocks. So these have been updated and upscaled. I'll go over the Guardians first, because I've painted them up. So I play Ulfway, well, which is very good news for me. Uh, but um, yeah, these are my Ulfway Storm Guardians. They're going to be the core backbone of my army. I never actually bought Storm Guardians, because they were always an upgrade kit. But as you can tell, when they look really great in plastic. Uh, I've, with my new Ulfway scheme, which I've refined since I painted the Farseer from... I mean, the, the Autark from Eldritch Omens. And yeah, you get a lot of posability and customizability. It is a bit limited. You still get 10 close combat weapons, but only like eight pistols because they expect you to run like two special weapons or even four if I don't, because uh, I'm just running them bare bones. But it's a really cool kit and it follows the GW design principle with the Eldar where like, even though they're monopose bodies, they get very different poses with the arms. And you still have a lot of freedom and all the heads. Like I love... The new heads for these Eldar models, they're amazing. That's why normally I don't put heads on these Eldar models, but the old ones were not good. Uh, but yeah, these are just some great Eldar models, and they were really fun to paint up. Uh, it, you know, it's it's just a nice update and upscaling of the old Eldar miniatures. I'll show them next to some Guardians and Dire Avengers as well. So there's a bit of a scale creep. They are quite bigger. They are also on 28mm bases, but... Overall, it's a great update. And with the sprues, you get some... Well, it's just a nice update. The cool thing with the weapon platform, before you had to like drill a hole for it in the base, effectively, now it has its own plastic stand, if that makes sense. You put a piece of plastic on the base, and then you glue that... Uh, you glue the weapon base into it. So it's really cool, really nice. Then we have the, uh, the Warlocks, which are really cool. You get the first time, like, unhelmeted... Uh, Elder Psychers, which is nice. You can use them for your farces and stuff. Uh, my only downside with this kit is you only get one Witchblade and one Singing Spear. And I guess that's because they were limited by what was on 
space of the sprue. But you can't, for example, bid, build two with spears or two with witch blades. But that's the only downside. Otherwise, they're a great update. I love the rune hands. Wouldn't really go with the pistols, but that's just me. Then we have the Dark Reapers. This is a weird one for me. They're just... Uh, I do like the look. I know people memed on it. But they're only like just a slight update to the fine cast metal ones. Because I have them. And it's just a minor update. Nothing too revolutionary. The most change you get out of it is that uh well the x arc has all the options so how can you have a shrieking cannon reaper launcher tempest launcher or a missile launcher so that's nice it's a nice kit it's just it's more of a side grade just a minor update not like the jump you had with the guardians uh, and then finally got morgan ra who's uh, i'll show him next he's huge uh even next to his old morgan ra because i have all the old phoenix lords in metal and he's huge I'm the only thing is I'm not a fan of the hood. I would have liked if the hood was optional. Otherwise, it's a great model. It's uh, a bit awkward to go together. But other than that, it's just really nice update for the miniature. And yeah, it looks great. So overall, the miniatures are great. Once again, it's like Eldritch Omens. You get a lot of posability out of just these monopose kits because of just GW's design evolution. And yeah, they're just really nice kits. Really nice. The only thing I'm missing are the Shining Spears and the Avatar, but they're not out yet. So I think they're coming either next week or a little bit later on, which is fine. But overall, these are amazing miniatures. I'm trying to use as many as I can in my army. The only downside is, um, you know, we would have liked like more updates. I think I was shocked Warp Spiders didn't get an update. I thought they were going to get an update this time. Shine, uh, swooping hawks do need one but they're still kind of serviceable but i guess it's just the luck of the dice they wanted to do new stuff as well as updating old but other than that these miniatures are just great so with those out of the way let's get into the codex so this is a really thick codex it's like six pages less than space marines and my biggest downside to it is there is no uh ribbon like I know it's saved for the special edition, but I think even the normal edition of the Space Marines had one. This book is so thick, you really need a ribbon. Otherwise, I'm just going to put like paper post-it notes everywhere, which is what you should do anyway. But a ribbon of a book this thick should have been, you know, in there. Especially, I think it's like 30 or 35 pounds. Uh, my biggest downside with the book is the narrative. But this is kind of a trend with all 9th edition books. There's no timeline. And I'm confused about the narrative in the book because I think it's gone back in terms of like, for example, with Ulfway, uh, in the 8th edition codex, it showed that basically Eldrad got exiled for when he did his ritual that woke up Yinead. And then in the codex, it got resolved. He's now back in Ulfway. Uh, he was exiled, but now he's back working with Ulfway and is once again like a lead Varsir. But in this, in this book... They've kind of backpedaled that a bit, where he's now, you've got like three factions of Ulfway, the main Ulfway, uh, Eldrad and his exiles, and then you've got the Unari Ulfway, which is really confusing. And because there's no timeline, you can't, it's really weird. There's so much in this book, but not much narrative. And I can't find anything really new. And with no timeline, it feels like it's just an afterthought. And it's really... You know, you still get a page on each aspect warrior. It's just kind of, if you've been growing, like going, like I've bought every codex and it's like, the narrative is just really poor, which is shocking. Um, in terms of, it's just missing so much. It's so vague. Nothing's really clear. You don't have an update of what actually is going on. Uh, that's just, you know, that's a downside with the narrative. Rules wise, it is incredibly solid. So there's some changes in the book. Uh, I'm not sure if I should go through this fully because there's so much. Like, I would be going through this for like two hours. And I think there are other people who do that better. Uh, but I'll try and cover the key points. So the key thing I found with the Eldar Codex is it's kind of like... a. It's still a really good book and some really good internal balance. But the Codex has lost a lot. So in terms of what it's lost is... You had Die Avengers as troops. So when I played in 4th and 5th edition, um, when they added... No, I think it was 5th edition, yeah. So they made Bikes troops and Die Avengers troops. 
And the the reason they said this is because, well, Die Avengers are the biggest aspect. And, you know, you've got Sam Han, you've got bikers. So they want people to do either bikers or aspect armies or guardians. But your only troops this time are, are guardians of both varieties and rangers. Bikes haven't been troops for like two editions now. But I think they could revert that because bikes are no longer a problem. But Die Avengers are now elites. And they're good, but the problem is everything in the elites outclasses them and every other shooting aspect outclasses them. And they're only marginally better at shooting than your normal guardians, but they don't have obsec. They have to pay for obsec and only one unit can get it unless you're running like the Phoenix Lords. So if you wanted to run an aspect army, you can't do like battalions. You have to do like vanguard detachments, which limits your army a lot. And it just means you're not having much obsec unless you're running Phoenix Lords. So even though the book is very good and allows you to do a lot of things, just because it only has three troop units, you're very limited in what you can do if you're just trying to play narratively, which is just, and you go, oh, if you play narrative, you don't care about obsec. But even if you wanted to play a competitive army that was all about aspects, you're not a big downside if you wanted to have lots of obsec stuff, which is unfortunate. Um, and... The Harlequins eat up a lot of rules. Like, they have two pages of stratagems dedicated to themselves, which is the same as the Eldar, but then they don't have the same amount of rules or data sheets. So they've been refined and reduced in number, but they still eat up a ton of stratagems, and I feel like the Eldar are missing, like, a page of stratagems because a lot of it's been dedicated to the Harlequins, which is just a weird thing. Uh, but the good news is, you know... <clears throat> People have been saying it seems broken. It does seem strong. But for me, it just seems to do what Elder does, where you have key units that do really well in what they're designed to do. And they've actually done interesting ways to balance stuff by either limiting squad sizes or limiting how big you can make a unit so you can't make a single Death Star unit that you can buff to craziness. For example, Shining Spears can only go up to units of six and Dark Reapers are capped at five. I'm not a fan of that for Dark Reapers because they've kind of killed the unit in too many ways. But um, for Shining Spears, for example, you can still take six. You can't take 12 anymore, but it stops you going like, oh, here's this unit of 12. They're re-rolling saves. have like a two-up save, all of that. You can still do that, but just on smaller units. And aspect-wise are much better. The five-up Invon is moot because, you know, they're toughness free, but they're just much better at what they do, which is awesome considering you had like effectively space marines doing having units that did what elder did and you're like mm. but now the aspects are better which is really cool farces have been toned down a bit but are still really nice psychic powers are great you've still got all that synergy in the codex which is important and yeah it just feels like an elder codex um apart from that troop stuff i mentioned it's just really solid and you've got a lot of synergy and if you know how to play the army and well competitively it's great you know you've got your strands of fate so every turn, you're getting at like um, four to five what are like guaranteed dice effects, which you can use. So if you're like good at planning ahead and basically being an elder player, this is an amazing book. I can see like some people will fear some of it, um, but based, you know, I'm not a competitive 40k player. I'm trying to learn again, but still seems really solid. Um, so if you didn't, I'll go for it briefly. So the main trait is like you've got battle focus. So you can either, if you advance and then shoot, you can add stationary, so you get no penalty. Or after you shoot, you can move D6, which is slowed by terrain. So you can't, unless you've got like special rules, you can't really dock, shoot and run back into terrain effectively. And then like a lot of the new aspect rules, like Banshees have had so many buffs. They're now minus one to be shot. They can advance and charge, which they could always do. If they charge you, not only do you can't overwatch, uh, you can't set to defend and you, you strike last. So they're really good, uh, and they get plus one to wound if they charge, and they're now strength four because of their power swords. So they're wounding marines on freeze on the charge, but they're more of like a combo unit. So effectively, if you're charging with multiple stuff, you're charging with the banshees as well, and then, you know, like they make them always strike last, and you can do big crazy charges. Striking scorpions are great at blending infantry because they have four attacks each, and if they do sixes to hit, they get additional hits, and if they do sixes to wound on their normal attacks, they do mortal wounds in addition to their normal damage. So they can do a lot of damage to infantry. Fire dragons are now strength nine. They lost the plus two. So they're d6 plus two base, but they lost the plus four 
if we're within half. And I think that's intentional, which is odd. But they're still really good at blowing up stuff. Even if you wanted to run a Wraith construct, construct army, the core, uh, all the like uh, craft worlds and stuff are really solid. And if you wanted to go like full Wraith Guard and Wraith Lords, you would definitely pick Eandon because they basically get stuff like Battle Focus and Helion and stuff like that. It's really cool. So they've taken some stuff away, but given a lot of synergy back. Um, even though Dire Avengers have lost quite a lot, they're now Assault 3. So they've Assault 2. If they've got a stratagem, um, so if they're under half, if they're under starting strength, they can fire again for 2 CP. But they've lost Obsec. They can do actions while shooting, but then they have to pay 10 points to get that back, but only can, one unit can do it. And even though they can shoot while doing actions, there's a custom trait that allows you to do it for your whole army. So it's kind of like, ooh... You know, it's a bit... Uh, and there's a psychic power that gives you obsec and lets you shoot while doing actions. So you can kind of replace them with guardians and those kind of rules if you're taking them anywhere. Uh, Autox are pretty solid. They've gained an attack from the Compen uh, from the Eldritch Omens. I'll talk about my one because I think that this is a pretty cool build. So I've given my Autox the Warps Jump Generator, the Star Lance... Thing, this whatever it's called the star lance and then a reaper launcher but you could probably take a fusion gun instead and then she also has a banshee mask but i've given her t uh, a warlord trait and the relic so she got the warlord trait where once per turn you can count a saving failed saving all a zero damage and then she's got uh, i think aegis of eldernesh which gives her a two up save and minus one damage and it's just like I think it's plus one AP against damage one weapons, something like that. So she's actually really tanky. I can have a fly around giving uh, reroll ones and stuff, jumping around because of warp jump. And still got a reaper launcher. Maybe would have been better with the fusion gun, but I still like the flexibility of the reaper launcher just being able to shoot anywhere, then jump 2d6 for my battle focus. Um, so that's a really cool build you can do with the Autoc, which is surprisingly tanky with like five wounds, um, two up save, you know, d minus one damage. And then you're also like just doing lots, five attacks, hitting on twos, strength six with AP two, two damage, uh, AP three, two damage. So, you know, it's just quite solid. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, even the Harlequins, they can slot into an Eldar or Drukhari army for free. Uh, well, you still have to pay the command points, but they don't ruin your army. And they're still a solid force, you know. Um, they've got hurt by what comes in the box, so they can't build as much in terms of unit-wise because, you know, you can only give them, like, two fusion pistols, two of each special melee weapon. But then they've kind of mitigated around that, except with the guns, by if you have one of the three special uh, Harlequin weapon melee weapons in the unit, you pay a, you pay a stratagem cost and then that weapon's effect kicks in for the whole unit. So it's an interesting way to get around that. I would have preferred if those stratagems were free, because it's kind of like you're paying five points for a weapon and then paying one to two command points for their effect, and only one unit can do it per turn. Um, and then you've got your Nari, which just seem fine. They're just a melee force now, pretty much. Their special rule is they always fight first. They're not as crazy as they were, the avatar of the young Khan is well avatar of Uniad is pretty crazy just because it's d6 plus three or four damage or two to four damage let me just have a sorry it's d3 plus three damage strength uh strength 11 ap4 ignore invulnerables but it's like if she can get into combat then you know you're kind of screwed but other than that yeah yanari don't seem too crazy and also, yeah, if you're running a Harlequin force, you get Luck of the Laughing God. So each turn, depending on your army size, you get like three to four rerolls. And then you get more if you, uh, like, you can roll up to 66. And you only get extra Luck of the Laughing God if those rolls are all different. So if you're a six dice and you get one, two, three, four, five, six, you get six extra rerolls. And they can just be used for anything in the army. Um, I don't think they can be used if you take them with an Eldar or Drukhari army. But, um, yeah, you can... A pure Yanar, uh, a pure Harlequin force actually has quite a lot of rerolls, which is crazy. Um, 
But yeah, it's overall a really solid book. The points seem pretty fair, I'd say. Um, nothing is too expensive or too cheap. It all feels just about right. For example, like um, all the Phoenix Lords are basically around 150. I put the points up. Um, but it's really cool. Like it's just, I, I it's got on me. Like as as you can see, I've painted miniatures. Uh, I've, I've got a lot of Eldar anyway, so Eldar are gonna be my new army. Because uh, I was gonna do Black Templars, but then I was like, oh Eldar are coming, so I'll just go back to my first army. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I've tried to keep it not too long. Um, is there anything else? The Avatar of Cain is pretty nice. The only problem is I can't see him surviving. <laughs> like he just lives and uh, lives off obscuring terrain because there's no other way to hide him or protect him. So it's kind of a bit unfortunate. Uh, he's a great miniature. Like, oh my gosh. And he's not bad rules wise. It's just in this kind of game, he really struggles getting into combat on paper. But we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's just like a great update so many new rules well the new miniatures are just oh my gosh like so nice as an Eldar player um and even the older stuff has been updated with really good rules to make them usable because before you kind of just like eh, just want to take them they're too they're old mon old miniatures and their rules aren't great but now it's all pretty solid like yeah it's just a really well-rounded book and they're probably just like stuff that is kind of too strong but i'm not too sure i think the biggest offenders are probably the strands of fate dice and maybe stuff like um what do you call it uh you can effectively do turn one charges with one biker unit if you're playing the same hand but as i said that's only just six spears uh but you can do a lot of stuff and the problem with fate the strands of fate dice it's really hard to tell because they're so random but they give you guaranteed sixes on what you roll like, I'm running two Farseers in my army, one's Eldrad. So I get five strands of fate a turn, and I get to reroll two per turn because I have Farseers, uh, two Farseers. So I can pick, like, five and go, that's what I need. Because, uh, like, especially as you can still put stuff into reserve, you can go, oh, I'm going to bring in, like, uh, this unit of Banshees before it dies. Uh, I'm nine away. I've got, like, one to... If you have two... Fate dice for charges, that's a guaranteed charge. Or you can even go, well, I've got a six, now I just need to roll a three and should be able to get that on a D6. So you can do like crazy charges and even like trigger stuff like, oh, stuff that only triggers on a six to hit or to wound. If you've got the corresponding fate dice, you just swap that in and that's now a guaranteed six. So yeah, um, and yeah, even with the, the Shining Spears having core, because they're only six models, like max six, it's not too bad. Not compared to stuff like broadsides and um, what do you call it? Like, you know, custodies units. But um, I feel Reapers, once again, got the biggest hit just because they lost their move and fire. It's now like they ignored the effects of light terrain. If you want move and fire, you have to pay 20 points. But then you're like, you've got a 150 point five man unit. That is now 170 points so it can move and shoot. And my only trade-off was, if you could make that unit of 10, I think that would have been fine. Because they've capped them at unit of fives, they should not have gotten away. Like, their old rules, they always hit on freeze. So they effectively had move and shoot. They should have kept that and kept them at five, because then I'll go, oh, I would take multiple units. Uh, now I would not even take them. It's like, maybe unit of... I don't know, it's because you can't take a unit of 10. It's... It's really weird. It's like, the, it, it's really strange because they got a new kit and they're kind of just not that useful anymore. But that, that's the interesting thing I'm talking about with balance. Uh, but you have a lot of tools and I'm really glad like falcons are better. Like water spiders, oh my God. Even swooping hawks are pretty good. They can like redeploy as their battle focus. Where, and they're like each gun is assault four, strength four. And if they roll a six to hit, they automatically wound. So they're great at just doing pinning fire and jumping around the board and you know even the phoenix lords are really useful because they give their aspect warriors uh, aspect keyword warriors obsec but they have the uh, keyword themselves so they're obsec as well so like what i think is really cool is you get karandaraz 
forward deploy him and then he's just running and charging stuff and he's like obsec so he's like charging into small units doing either 12 damage one attacks or like six damage two attacks either at strength six or strength eight and he's just gone yeah i'm obsec what are you gonna do about it like it's great like the everything's just really cool and apart from a few minor losers this book is just really solid overall so if you're an elder player i'd highly recommend picking up the book even like uh, whatever format well, I mean, you can only really buy it physically, but you know, I highly recommend picking up the book and the miniatures are well as great. Like I'm going to buy, even though I have a squad of guardians, I'm going to buy two more boxes of the new guardians. So I have, um, two storm guardians and one normal guardians, obviously because I'm Oathway, but they're just really cool kits as well. If I wasn't running them as guardians, I'd probably convert them into die Avengers because uh, you can effectively do, it's a bit of work with the arms just because uh, the Dire Avengers are ball sockets. These are just flat arms, uh, but the head swaps are easy as well. You just put a Dire Avenger head on. But the models are lovely. The The book is just really solid. Like, it, it, I, I'm i not sure why people are saying it's broken, like, outside of Strands of Fate. It just seems like a really well-tuned book. Great internal balance. You have a lot of choices, what you want to do. And even if you, like, go, like, You've played this for like six to 12 months ago. I've kind of done everything with all the craft world elder units. And you go, oh, I could try like doing them as Yanari, or I can even like go into uh, Harlequins. So it's just a really comprehensive book that is just, yeah, great. The only downside is the narrative, but that's kind of a ninth edition symptom in general for most of the books, which is just confusing. But yeah, it's a great codex. Highly recommend it. And yeah, the miniatures are well, just just stunning. Really fun to paint, and they just look great. Finally, Eldar are back, looking amazing on the table. I can't. Uh, well, it's like I'm wondering if there's going to be another update, like in six to twelve months, mon mon miniatures wise, because we're still missing four of the Phoenix Lords, and or four of the Phoenix Lords being updated. Surprised we didn't get any Shining Spear, uh, Phoenix Lord this time around. But okay, but it's like. I really hope next time we get plastic warp spiders and sweeping hawks because those desperately need updates. Um, but that's just me wishlisting. Otherwise, it's just really good <laughs> as an Eldar player. Um, but that's pretty much. Oh, uh, and forgot to mention, even like some of the secondaries are really cool. I think my only the the one I would only pick. Let me pick because like you have to pick secondaries. Yeah, so it's Wrath of Cain, No Mercy, No Respite. So you get one victory point at the end of the battle round if a melee unit was destroyed by a melee attack from Aspect Warrior units, and you score one VP if the end of the battle round if one or more enemy units was destroyed by a ranged attack made by a different Aspect Warrior unit at this battle round. And if you do both, uh, you get two more victory points. So effectively, you could get four victory points a turn, which would cap at 15. But if you did that four turns, or like... Uh, yeah, if you did... Scored it four turns, you'd get 16, which would cap out. And it kind of just complements how the army plays because, you know, I'm running like lots of aspects. I'm running like two squads of shining spears, two squads of banshees, and then two squads of fire dragons and a squad of 10 warp spiders. And it's like, it just complements, even though I've got lots of other stuff. It's a really thematic, yet yeah, it's good <laughs> um, secondary, which is what I'd like to see more in other codexes. It's just thematic but yet you know strong as long as you're working towards that in terms of army construction and playing to the theme of the army but yeah that's pretty much it please remember to like and subscribe as comment as well as what, what you thought of the video and what you thought of the codex um as i said i tried to keep it pretty brief it should only be about half an hour long just because yeah you know this is 130 pages so it's to save you two hours of me going and this does that and that's really good and this does that and that's the thing um but yeah let me know if you enjoy it uh covering 40k content is really weird for me because it's so deep and I, it's just i don't know where to start because you get like lots of people reading the book which is fine but i i think for 40k that's just too much for me and i don't want to bog people down with like a two-hour video like i did with the compendium which was just too much but yeah let me know what you thought are you uh, hopeful of the new Elder Codex? Are you going to buy it? Because uh, I am. If you want... I mean, well, I, I might buy the special edition. I always buy the, buy the special edition stuff. Um, 
but yeah, uh, if you yeah, if you'd like to buy the Elder Codex or pre-order any of the other stuff like the new miniatures, uh, please feel free to use my affiliate link to Element Games in the episode description below. You'll get a twenty percent discount, or sometimes even twenty five, uh, on for everything with no additional cost to yourself while helping to support the channel. So feel free to check it out if you can. It just helps me out a lot while being at no additional cost to yourself. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. I can't wait. Like I've got all my friends back into 40k again because like, guys, let's just why don't we play 40k again? Why not? Why not? Uh, some of them play Tau, so they're happy uh, and Custodies. But um, yeah, you know, it's it, it's getting me back into 40k. If that's good or bad. And, you know, also I'm really hyped for the Natchman box, which should hopefully be coming soon because they're in here and I'm going to do uh, might do a video on what I guess <laughs> the Natchman Corsairs will do because you get a lot of um, reveals. I'll show some cool pictures of the Corsairs now, like the alternate schemes are really cool. They've given me a lot of ideas and you seem to get alternate heads if you just wanted to run like um, Drukari Force or Helmeted Force. That's really cool with the Corsairs. I don't know why they didn't show that. It's so cool. Uh, but I will be back with Kill Team content soon. Uh, as you can tell, my voice has returned mostly literally came back last night so i'm like ah, i can talk again it's feeling rough now because i've maybe doing a like, uh, recording for like 40 minutes probably isn't wise um <laughs> which is why i can't do this video too long um but yeah i'll be back with more kill team content stuff uh, i'm also going to the team tournament and at warhammer world in march in two-ish weeks is it two weeks yeah it's really really close so if you're there i'll see you but i'll be back with more kill team videos i'll be back on the content train for those kill team operations so yeah without that um i'll see you guys soon and remember you can always roll crits especially if you can manipulate the strands of fate